dawn breaks over the Gold Coast, a pristine ribbon of Australian shoreline where skyscrapers meet the surf. But this morning, something is deeply wrong. The sea is still, lifeless, as a carpet of silver bodies covers the sand. Their scales have turned a dull grey in the early light, and the air is heavy with the stench of decay. It is the smell of death in a tourist paradise. Locals and tourists stand nearby in stunned silence. They are watching as the tide delivers even more of the dead. This is not the aftermath of a storm. There is no wreckage, no debris from any storm. This is something quieter, and it is far more lethal. To understand this ending, we must first go back to the beginning. Before the silence, there was this. A living river of silver. Beneath the surface lives the engine that powers the entire coastal ecosystem. We call them baitfish, like sardines or pilchards. But they are far more than just bait. They are the pulse. This dense, shimmering mass is a living, traveling city of pure energy, the gear transferring the sun's power. This energy is transferred into the ocean's giants. They feed the dolphins, the seabirds, and the surrounding reefs. Like any great metropolis, this one has a singular, driving purpose, survival. They must navigate the gauntlet of predators. They must feed. They must endure. But this fragile existence, the very beat of the coast, depends entirely on the delicate balance of their world. Specifically, it depends on two invisible forces, temperature and oxygen. In just a few short weeks, those forces would betray the very life they were meant to sustain. The cradle of life, this stretch of ocean, was about to become a killing field. As the catastrophe unfolded at the spit, officials scrambled for answers. What they found was a nightmare. The readings revealed a deadly pair, water temperatures surging to record highs and dissolved oxygen levels collapsing to near zero. Normally, these two forces rarely strike in perfect concert. One might spike, but the other compensates. Now, they were a lethal duet. The ocean's delicate equilibrium was broken. Scientists warned this was not a local incident. It was a symptom of a far larger, global chain reaction. The same grim reports were emerging elsewhere. From the coasts of Greece to the bays of California and the Gulf of Thailand, similar mass fish kills were documented. We are witnessing the rise of the ocean heat wave and the rapid, insidious expansion of the ocean's dead zones. These are not isolated tragedies. They are tremors, warning shots from an ecosystem under extreme stress. The obstacle is not a single predator. The obstacle is the environment itself, turning hostile. The stakes are no longer just one school of fish, but the stability of the entire coastal food web. When these heat waves spike, the entire foundation of the sea, the food web, can collapse. The question is terrifying. Is this the beginning of an ocean? Suffocating? To understand the kill, you must understand the victim. Fish, unlike us, are ectothermic or cold-blooded. They cannot regulate their own body temperature. They live entirely at the mercy of the water around them. And herein lies the fatal flaw. As the water warms, their entire metabolism accelerates and their hearts beat faster. They move faster, burning energy at a frantic, involuntary pace that they cannot control. They grow desperate, needing more oxygen than ever Beffer, just to stay alive in the warming water. But this is the deadly paradox of the sea, and warmer water physically holds less available oxygen. The physics are relentless. As water molecules gain energy, they become too agitated to hold on to the dissolved gas. The oxygen simply escapes into the atmosphere. The result of this process is a fatal imbalance. The fish need more oxygen, but they are in water that has less to give. It is the perfect biological storm. The demand for oxygen skyrockets while the supply collapses. This phenomenon has a name, ocean deoxygenation. It is not just data, 
It is a warning. And on the Gold Coast, that warning was about to be delivered. The heat wave peaks. The oxygen crashes. The trap, set by physics and biology, finally springs shut. Underwater, the living city of silver fractures. All cohesion is lost among the school. The school, once a marvel of cooperation, becomes a chaotic mass of individuals driven by one primal instinct, breathe. Their gills pump frantically, pulling in water that cannot sustain them, water that no longer holds life. In their desperation, they swarm to the surface, breaking the water in a churning, chaotic mass. They are trying to breathe air, a futile attempt to escape the very water that is killing them. But there is no escape for them. The ocean itself has become the enemy. The surface glitters, not with the energy of life, but with the scales of the fallen. Then the tide turns. The first wave rolls in, carrying not foam, but bodies. They arrive on the sand, still quivering, flapping weakly. Then the next wave arrives, and the next. Each pulse of the tide is a new layer in the morgue, a delivery of the dead. Tourists flee the beach, horrified. A world-famous paradise has become nature's tomb. Here on this pristine shore, climate change has opened a new silent front in its war on nature. And this scientist's fear is only the beginning of what is to come. Days later, the scene is still haunting. The beach has been sanitized and scrubbed clean by heavy machinery. Trucks heavy with the dead have driven away, but the stench remains a ghost in the air. This event is more than a tragedy. Scientists warn it is a snapshot of our global future. It is a physical warning delivered directly to one of the world's most famous shores. A warmer ocean is not just killing fish. It is bleaching our coral reefs and breaking the ancient food chain. It is suffocating vital stocks from the coasts to the abyss, upsetting the global balance. The ocean, humanity's oldest ally and provider of every second breath, is running out of breath. If the ocean system collapses, the consequences will find their way from the water to our tables and economies. As Dr. Guida states, the ocean cannot wait. The race to net zero is a race for survival. The message is clear. If the ocean dies, we die with it. But if we act to cut carbon, restore our reefs and protect the seas, life can return. The ocean still holds countless untold stories. Join us as we explore the deepest corners of our blue planet. Subscribe now to join us for the next expedition into the unknown.